can scoliosis happen suddenly? For a diagnosis of scoliosis to occur, there are certain parameters that have to be met. First thing, there needs to be an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine must have already developed. And there must be a rotational component associated with this curvature. And normally the rotation is into the concavity. This is what makes scoliosis a three-dimensional problem. Now, when this curve gets measured on, on a scoliosis x-ray, the Cobb angle of measurement needs to be 10 degrees or greater. The Cobb angle is the gold standard in assessing scoliosis. And this measurement is taken during a scoliosis x-ray and it involves drawing lines from the top vertebra of the curvature to the most tilted vertebra in the bottom. And these two most tilted vertebra results in an angle which is expressed in degrees. And the higher the Cobb angle, normally means the larger the scoliosis there is and the more the spine is out of alignment, meaning the more severe the scoliosis condition. Mild scoliosis is typically diagnosed anywhere between 10 and 25 degrees. And when an angle measure, measure it between this level, that's when they call mild scoliosis. Now, mild scoliosis doesn't take into account what the effect could be occurring on the body. And mild scoliosis doesn't necessarily mean that scoliosis is gonna stay there. It may progress, unfortunately, over time. Moderate scoliosis is between 25 and 40 degrees. And this is when the measurement's taken in that stage. Now, again, just because it's measured at 25 to 40 degrees down doesn't mean it's necessarily you're going to stay there. And then anything greater than 40 degrees in a Cobb angle measurement, it's considered a severe scoliosis. And again, this is only taking into account the size of angle. Patients with severe scoliosis sometimes may have no physical effects, meaning no pain, no discomfort. They can be very functional. And sometimes patients with mild scoliosis could have severe pain and dysfunction. So these uh, classifications only take into account the size of the angle, not necessarily the effect it's having on the body. However, the general rule of thumb is that the greater the curve, the more likely it is to create a problem. And then curves over 80 degrees is something I call very severe scoliosis. Now the question is, will scoliosis get worse? And unfortunately, the majority of the question is yes, yes, curves will progress. Now, what we don't know is how fast you'll progress and at the rate of progression, and we don't know how when it, when that will slow down, and we don't know how big curves can become, but majority of cases, you're gonna see progression in scoliosis. Scoliosis, when it's diagnosed, is never indicative of where it's gonna be, meaning every severe scoliosis was once moderate, every moderate scoliosis was once mild. So mild curves can easily progress beyond, especially left untreated and not proactively reacted or treated during uh, very progressive times, which we'll explain in a second. Only proactive treatment can counteract the progression of scoliosis, meaning trying to reduce the scoliosis, making the curve smaller, is really the only way in trying to slow down its progressive nature because as curves progress, they're more likely to progress. So as a curve becomes bigger, it's more likely to get bigger every single time. So therefore, the way you influence how much a curve progresses is by trying to make it smaller. One of the big big mistakes is just trying to slow things down, meaning just trying to slow things down normally doesn't equate in a in a very significant change because you're just it's still going to end up where it's going it's just going slower. Where by taking some off of the scoliosis can actually influence the progressive nature and where it actually ends up at the end of, at the end of the treatment model. So the most prevalent type of scoliosis is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. It's by far when people think about scoliosis, this is the most common thing people think about. However, even though it's the most common what thing people think about, it's not the most common type of scoliosis in the in the world. The most common type of scoliosis, unfortunately, is in adult stages, and it's normally in patients that are 60 plus. But in adolescent scoliosis, can curves develop quickly? Every case is very different, but in adolescent case, growth is the, th is the number one trigger that causes progression. As adolescents or as kids go from juvenile year to adolescent year to adult years and they go through this progressive stage that they're this is when curves are at the most risk for progression because this is when they're growing the most and since growth can be very quick and very fast in this in, in, in puberty we know that this is when curves worsen and since some kids go through very rapid phases of growth and other kids go through very very slower more, more slower phases of growth this is why we believe there's different progression rates and why some curves progress and why some don't. But the more, the faster the child goes through growth 
and the bigger the curve is during this growth phase, the more likely curves will progress. Now, trying to reduce or hold a curve during growth is tends to be the focus of most traditional treatment options. Meaning, if you have a 20 or a 30 degree curve and you're you know you're 10 years old and you're about to go into your growth phase, most traditional options are just trying to slow it down. And when they find these curves in mild stages, um, a lot of times they recommend no treatment. They say, well, let's we'll see if it worsens during growth. Well. Why find it early if you're not going to treat it? Like it, 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 does, like it makes early diagnosis almost irrelevant. Meaning if you find a small curve and say, oh, let's just wait and see if it worsens. Well, why even diagnose it? You know, why, why even look for it if you're not going to do anything until it becomes severe anyway? But in mild cases, it can be harder to spot because the only thing that tends to bring out the scoliosis is a postural problem. Normally, they don't have pain or any kind of discomfort. Now, even though we know scoliosis doesn't onset instantly, we know it doesn't progress instantly, it can seem that way. Meaning a lot of curves that are less than 25 degrees are almost unnoticeable. And then a child will go through a growth spurt and they can go from, they can completely skip the moderate level and end up severe. Meaning they will, let's say they get the treatment, they got diagnosed with a 20 degree curve and they're, they're very small postural deviation. They can, and the doctor says, come back in six months, we're gonna do nothing, just follow and we'll see what happens. The person can walk out of the doctor's office, go through a growth spurt the very next day, go through one, two, three inches of growth within one or two or three months and go back in six months and now be diagnosed with a severe scoliosis and now told they need surgery. They can totally skip this. The fastest progression I've seen in adolescent stages is I've seen curves progress 20 degrees in six to eight weeks. I mean, it can be very, it can seem like it happens overnight, but it doesn't. It's, it's a progressive manner that as the patient grows, the curve worsens. So that's one, that's why a patient thinks they can develop quickly and it is quickly, but it's not overnight. It's still a process that every degree is adding to itself as the patient grows. This is why we also think why adolescent scoliosis is more progressive in, in girls, because girls go through a younger growth spurt and they go through a faster growth spurt than boys. Bo girls growth spurt are typically between 11 and 13, where boys are typically 13 to like 15, 16. So they grow slower over a longer time than girls do. Now, can scoliosis develop quickly in adults? Well, the most common type of scoliosis to affect the adult is actually adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, the same one I was just talking about that went diagnosed or untreated and the person doesn't know about it and they actually now have it in the adult stage. It's still the most common type. Now, in adolescence, we actually think about 5% of adolescents have kids, have scoliosis, I'm sorry, but in the adult stage, 60 plus, we think it's like 30%. So what's it telling us is a great majority of patients that never get diagnosed because the curves never become either painful or debilitating or severe enough, but the curve still progresses. And in the adult stage, since the curve is progressing as a result of gravity over time, the number one thing that brings on diagnosis is pain, where in the adolescent stage, the number one that brings on diagnosis is postural deviation. When it becomes pain, then they normally get x-rays, they normally get x-rays taken, and they're told they have scoliosis. Now, in adolescence, the progressive trigger is growth. In adults, it is gravity over time. It is gravity pushing the spine down, causing this curve to progress. Now, unfortunately, the progression isn't linear. It starts off linear. So when adults move into the, into the adult stage, they're going to progress directly related to their size of curve, meaning a 50 degree curve will progress faster in the adult stage than a 40 and a 40 faster than a 30 and 30 faster than a 20. So the size of curve matters in the adult stage. But let's say your curve is progressing linear. Let's say you have a 40 degree curve and let's say it's progressing about a half a degree a year. It doesn't seem like a lot year to year to year. You're going to notice very little differences, very little change. But as that half degree adds up, somewhere around 40 years of age, you've progressed about 10 degrees and now you may start experiencing pain. And it's a very linear type of progression in this right called middle life. But when you start to break 40 to 50 years of age, whatever you're progressing, you'll start increasing the rate of progression. And once it starts increasing the rate of progression, it does something that I like to call snowballing. It starts gaining speed, meaning as it gets bigger and as you get older, those two things compound themselves when well, now it starts going one degree a year, then two degrees a year, then four degrees a year, then eight degrees a year. So we can see unfortunate rapid progression in late stage progressive cases, 60, 70 degrees, or 60 or 70 years of age or greater, we can start seeing curves progress 10, 15 degrees a year again. So therefore curves can progress very, very rapidly in adolescent stage during peak growth spurts. And it can progress rapidly during late stage progression 
in, in, in older adults. There's only one other case that can progress rapidly, and that's traumatic, meaning you go through a traumatic injury, either adolescent or as an adult, where you compress some vertebras or fracture some vertebras. You can cause a scoliosis that can in initiate very significant scoliosis in a very small time, and that can progress very, very rapidly from that moment on. And the last thing would be something like a bone infection or something like that that's eating away at at, at some bones of the spine can cause a rapid scoliosis. But in the majority of cases that we're talking about, non-traumatic, non-infection, it's going to be during growth or during late stage life, even though we know that they all started off smaller. So therefore, the best way to affect the progressive rate of scoliosis is really to deal with it in a smaller stage because we know the size of curve, patient's age, the location, the cause, and the severity are all factors that lead to how fast a curve will progress. And since we know scoliosis can develop over time and suddenly can progress during these key times, we think it happens fast. But really the truth is we, we could have cut the scoliosis much sooner and treated it, but finding scoliosis sooner and just watching and seeing what happens isn't really a treatment. It's just setting you up for future problems. So therefore the best time to treat scoliosis is the minute you find it because early diagnosis only really matters if you're gonna do an effective early treatment to deal with the possible effects that it can lead to later on in life. So at Scoliosis Reduction Center, that's what we do. We offer very proactive treatment in treating scoliosis and preventing this type of process from occurring because the smaller you can keep your curve, in an adolescent stage or in an adult stage, the less likely it's gonna to progress to a severe scoliosis because we know the bigger your curve becomes, the more likely it's to progress in either stage. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.